Welcome Weirdos, I'm Darren Marlar and this is Weird Darkness. If you're new here, welcome to the show. And while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to enter contests, to connect with me on social media. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. This is a special Chamber of Comments episode where I answer emails that you've sent me recently. And you can email me anytime by sending an email to Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at WeirdDarkness.com. That's Darren at WeirdDarkness.com or just click on the contact page at WeirdDarkness.com. Our first email comes from JT. He says, Hi, Darren. As someone who was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, and even took grade school field trips to Arbor Lodge in Nebraska City, I was surprised I had never heard of the Seven Sisters legend. It warms my weirdo heart that my little piece of flyover country holds some creepiness just like everywhere else. I love your podcast, and yours is one of a very, uh, very select few that I'm always listening to. Out of curiosity, I know other podcasts will often have interviews or people who call in and discuss their paranormal stories with the host. Have you considered also looking into that for Weird Darkness? Also, congrats on your new Weirdo Whip. I'm pretty sure nobody refers to their cars as whips anymore, but I enjoy alliterations. Keep up the good work. Signed, John T. Well, thank you, John. I really uh, appreciate it. And it's really great once in a while to, do, to hear a story from your own area that you'd never heard before. Uh, living here in Rockford, Illinois, it took me years before I'd even heard that there were hauntings here, and yet now I hear about them all the time. But sometimes it takes a while. And In fact, I'm from Kansas City originally, and I don't know of any haunts there. I know they're there, I just never really heard of them. It's, it's weird. You hear of haunts everywhere else except your own hometown for some reason. Uh, in answer to your question about doing interviews, uh, I, I, I get requests to do interviews with guests a lot. I get a lot of uh, paranormal investigators, authors. Um, in fact, uh, Andrea Perrin from The Conjuring, you know, the oldest girl from The Conjuring House, she would even, she even uh, uh, volunteered to be a guest on, on Weird Darkness. And I might make an exception for her but really, I don't do uh, guests because so many other podcasts do. Uh, a lot of other podcasts, especially those of the paranormal and supernatural and true crime, they either have guests that they talk to or there's a bunch of them in a room talking with each other, like several hosts. And I'm, I'm trying to set Weird Darkness apart from those and be more of a storyteller with just a single voice. So I, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, some people would like to hear interviews. I understand that. It just, it's not really my thing. And it is a lot more work than it sounds like, too. And I wouldn't be able to do as many episodes as I do now if I was doing interviews. So thank you for that. And also thank you for the really nice comments about the whip. It's, uh, we're calling it the Weirdo Wagon right now. I think that's the name that we're sticking with the Weird Darkness Ford uh, Expedition. It's, uh, it's now the, the, uh, the weirdo wagon, and I'm taking it everywhere I can with my table of swag. This next one comes from Miles. Dear Mr. Marler, I want to thank you for what you do. I'm behind in the podcast. I've just gotten to where you talk about your struggles with depression and not being able to get your meds. I, for one, am glad you were able to get the medication you needed. If the darkness would have taken over, the world would have lost one of the best storytellers the world has ever known. Anyways, I wanted to let you know that I have found out I have a high possibility of having kidney cancer. Oh my gosh, Miles, I'm so sorry to hear that. But uh, you and your podcast have helped me intensely in keeping in the light when my depression kicks in from this frightening time in my life. I just wanted to let you know you and your work still touch the lives of many for the better. With all my best wishes, thank you. Sincerely, Miles. Wow, Miles, I am, I am so sorry to hear that you're going through that. Um, Kidney disease in any way is awful, but, but to find out that you might have kidney cancer, that has to be scary. I can understand why you might, might, you, why you might actually suffer from a bit of depression with that. Uh, please know that I will be praying for you tonight. In fact, I'm going to take a, a brief moment now and, and pray for you before I continue with this. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank, please be with Miles, be with, uh, with him and his cancer. Uh, lay your healing hand on him and 
and remove whatever it is that's going on there, if it truly is cancer or if it's something else, and give Miles and those around him uh, a peace. Let them know that you're in control. And also give wisdom, guidance, and dexterity to the doctors who need to do whatever it is that needs to be done. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, Miles, thank you very much for sharing. I know that sometimes it's hard to open up like that. And it's really good to hear that your depression, that you kind of come to me sometimes and listen. It kind of takes away some of the depression. That's really, really great to hear. Keep me updated on what's going on with you. I, I'd, I'd, seriously, I'd really like to have a follow-up on that. Andy sent me an email saying, Hey, bud, I know this is coming out of nowhere, but I just had to say, I've listened to your show for a couple of years now, and every time I hear you mention Dark Archive episodes, I can't help but wonder why you haven't just named them Darkive. LOL. Seems pretty smooth to me. Darkive episodes. Yeah, so anyways, I'll go back to minding my own business now. But just wanted to throw my two cents in. LOL. Maybe you've already thought of it. I don't know. I'm sick at home and bored, so I guess I'm bugging you. Have a great weekend and God bless. Signed, Andy and St. Joseph. Um, St. Joseph, Michigan, I think is what it is. Well, uh, Andy, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Sorry you're feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, I hope, I mean, this has been several days since you sent this to me, so hopefully you're out of that and, and uh, back to health. Uh, it has been suggested before that I use Darkive instead of Dark Archive, uh, and I don't know why I haven't switched over to that, because it is kind of clever and it does kind of roll off the tongue, right? So I don't know, I really don't know why I haven't switched to that. When it was, when it was suggested earlier, I tried it for a few episodes and then stopped and started and went back to Dark Archive and I don't know why. So this is a Dark Hive episode. This is a Dark Archive episode. This is a Dark Hive episode. I don't know, would people who normally, well, if people who normally listen, they would understand Dark Archive is Dark Hive. Would a new listener understand that? I think maybe that's the reason that I didn't continue with it because it's a it's not a real word in like in the dictionary. So if somebody who was just listening for the first time was to hear this is a dark hive episode, I wonder would they be able to figure out that means dark archive or would it leave them scratching their heads the entire time they're listening? That that, that one I don't know. But th thank you for the email, uh, Andy. I appreciate it. Rob sent me this one. Hey, Darren, just found your podcast the other day on Spotify. I'm loving it. Exactly what I was looking for. I saw you're in Rockford, I think. I'm in Montgomery and drive to Joliet for work. The podcast is perfect for driving back and forth. Keep it up. Signed, Rob. Well, Rob, yes, a lot of people actually do listen to and from work. Uh, in fact, while I was at the Michigan Paracon over the weekend, I had a lot of people saying that they have long trips to work now. I guess now that the pandemic is over, while a lot of people are continuing to work from home, other people are now having to travel more than they had to before the pandemic. I'm not exactly sure how that works, maybe because they're picking up slack for those who decided not to come back to work. But regardless, there are people on the road a lot now and they say that they listen to podcasts, which I understand. It's weird. I have I've been in radio since 1990 and I'm still in radio. I still have the Weird Darkness radio show. So I've been in, aside from maybe a couple of months here and there when I was unemployed looking for a new job, but essentially I've been in radio nonstop since 1990. But I tell you, if I'm in the car driving, I don't listen to the radio. I know if, <laughs> if, if the radio stations that broadcast my show were to hear me say that, they might want to dump me because I'm, I'm turning away from them. I'm going to the enemy. Uh, but I listen to podcasts and I listen to audiobook that the books that that's what I do when I'm in the car that's just the technology nowadays so thank you very much uh, very much Rob I appreciate the email uh, Nessa sent me an email saying hey Darren new listener here started after meeting you briefly at MightyCon on August 21st 2022 I kept my promise and started listening and now I'm hooked I started with the very beginning of your podcasts and wondered if you've ever done a podcast covering the actual horror stories behind what Disney made cute, such as Pinocchio or Little Mermaid or Cinderella. If you have, I probably haven't got to it yet, but if not, it will be quite interesting to hear you tell these dark and gruesome stories. 
I feel I am now a weirdo family member and will continue to listen to all your podcasts. Thank you for taking the time to make them and for spreading awareness about depression. I also suffer from depression, but mine only seems to affect me physically. I felt it mentally and emotionally in the past, but not so much. I'm lucky enough that I didn't need medication to make me not feel so bad, but hopefully it will not affect me so badly as to need it in the future. Thanks for reading my email and hope to hear Dark Disney as a podcast someday. Your neighbor from Wisconsin, uh, Nessa. Nessa, it was really great to meet you at MightyCon. Thank you very much for coming over and stopping and say, saying hello to me at the table and taking a chance on a podcast you've never heard before. I'm really happy that you like what you heard and you even consider yourself a weirdo family member now. Uh, I looked through my archives and scripts from the past and I would have sworn that I had done an episode on exactly what you're asking for about those fairy tales and Disney stories uh, and the, re the actual origins of them, the dark origins of them, but you know, for the life of me, I cannot find that episode. So I either imagined it or somehow it's been lost over the years. So it might actually be a good time to uh, create it. I did do an episode about ha Hansel and Gretel. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of, but other than that, I, I can't find anything. So uh, thank you for the idea, Nessa. I appreciate that. And uh, Nessa sent me an email reply and she said that she was wondering if she could still go to the Weird at Work contest even though she's the only one listening while at work. Every worker has their own music and whatnot playing, but she prefers listening to the podcasts. Um, you know, Nessa, why not? Sure, go, go ahead. If you want to go to the contests page at WeirdDarkness.com, if you are listening to the podcast at work, go ahead and, uh, and fill it out. I would prefer if you're listening to it with other co-workers, but you're not, you know, not everybody is able to do that. And I'm not going to uh, going to fault you or punish you because management or others aren't listening. So yeah, feel, go ahead. Feel free to to uh, register for the weird dark, for the weird at work contest. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to the contest page at weirddarkness.com. Every month now, I just brought it back. I used to do it before the pandemic, but after everybody kind of went unemployed for a while, uh, it didn't make any sense to do a contest for people listening at work. But now that things have kind of started to get back into normalcy, I've brought back Weird at Work. And once a month, for those of you who do listen at work, I do a random drawing. And if I draw your name, you get four Weird Darkness coffee mugs, a bag of Weird Dark Roast coffee, and a t-shirt if you're the one that, uh, that sent in, sent in the, the, the uh, entry. So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that on the contest page. And if I don't choose your name, I usually do this the second or third Wednesday of the month. And if I don't choose your name, go right back in and register again because I clear out all the entries uh, every month after I choose a winner because, you know, people change jobs all the time. I don't want you in there for years. And then I get then I say, hey, you're the winner and you're no longer employed there. So. Uh, every month you're going to have to re-register, so if you don't win, feel free to jump in and re-register again. Connie sent me an email. Hi, Weirdo here. I'm a Christian and I love spooky slash crime etc. stories. I was so happy when I found your podcast a few weeks ago. I listen to it every night. Your voice is soothing and helps me relax and go to sleep. Love your Bible studies also. We are kindred spirits. Keep up the good work. I especially love when you add a Bible verse to the end of a podcast. Well, thank you, Connie. I, uh, I appreciate the email and also great to hear from a, as we call them, weirdo in Christ. And uh, uh, the Bible studies, what she's referring to is, of course, my Church of the Undead, which is not part of the Weird Darkness podcast, but it is on the Weird Darkness website. I've decided to make that a separate podcast because not everybody wants to be preached to every day of the week. So if you're interested in that, you can check out Church of the Undead by going to WeirdDarkness.com. But I'm really glad to hear that you like both podcasts, Connie. Thank you very much. Stacy sent me an email saying, I listen enough to your podcasts to know how often people make snide comments about your verses or religious quotes at the end of your podcast. It honestly confuses me how negatively visceral people's reactions are towards it just because you choose to do it. I'm not a religious person whatsoever. Sometimes I don't relate to what you say, but I'm not so self-important to impose my opinion against people's beliefs and be so staunchly against it that I choose not to listen to your podcast anymore. 
seems rather childish, honestly. For me, sometimes what you say is pretty inspirational because it's relatable to life in general and to the average person's struggles. Of course, I have my opinions about religion. I also understand that in instances such as this, it doesn't matter what my opinion is or if I don't like it or agree. It's your podcast and what you choose to talk about is your choice. Just as it's my choice to not listen if I don't agree without needing to voice my angry feelings all the time. It's just common decency. Here's an opinion that should matter. To be that deeply offended by someone's religion that one absolutely needs to take time out of their day to voice their oppressively negative comments says a lot about a person. Be kind, people. Life is too short to be mad about some Bible verses on a podcast somewhere. Chill out and learn to be respectful. Take a deep breath and just enjoy life. In a world where there's a lot to be offended by, this is definitely not one of them. Nothing but love for your content, Darren. Thank you for all that you do. Your podcast makes my days a lot easier and less lonely. Keep it up. All of it. Signed, Stacy. Wow, Stacy. I could not have said that better myself. That that was <laughs> that's a, well, great. I you know and for somebody who doesn't even necessarily believe the same thing I believe that that's amazing, Stacy. So thank you. And you should repent of that, by the way. You need to become a Christian, otherwise you're going to burn in hell. But other than that, <laughs> I, I, oh wow, I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't resist. Stacy, thank you very much for an amazing uh, email. I appreciate that. John sent me an email saying, uh, "Let's see where where to go. There it is." Uh, I've been a listener for a couple years now. I was listening to your podcast just the other night where you were talking about Highway 2 going across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and it made me laugh. I have been driving many years. On my way home from scout camp, I saw the weirdo wagon and got so excited. Yep, that was me, yelled and waved at you when you were going through Menominee, uh, Me Menominee Michigan, Menominee, uh, do, do ba do ba Menominee. Do, do, ba, do. I have no idea how to... I'm going to say Menominee. Anyway, uh, when you were going through Menominee, Michigan, your podcast tells me to get through the workday. And another weirdo, John. Well, I'm glad you flagged me down, John. Thank you very much. I was really hoping that you were a listener and not somebody wanting to complain about my driving. So, Scout Camp. You mentioned that you were coming home from Scout Camp. So, I wonder if you're a scout leader. My dad was Cub Master when I was a kid. Uh, we had, I can't remember the name, 3467, I think was our pack number in Olathe, Kansas. I might be wrong about the number, but anyway, um, we, he was the first scoutmaster for that particular troop. And m me and my little brother were in there, and uh, I think we had maybe a hundred Cub Scouts in there at one time. And uh, Dad was a great Cub Master. We, he, we had a lot of fun with him. So if you are a scout leader or if you're just one of the parents that are supportive, thank you. That really does mean a lot to your kids. Um, you may not know know that right now, but hopefully later in life they'll come back and say, "Dad, that was really cool that you were, uh, you know, that you were supportive of us in scouting." So uh, I had a lot of pleasant memories of those days. So thank you for what you're doing there, John. Appreciate it. Emily sent me an email. She said, "This is Emily from Paracon." We talked about the handicap point of view in paranormal research. I just wanted to email you in case I lost your card. It was great meeting you, and I hope to see you next year. Well, you know what? It was great to see you too, uh, Emily. And you got to know if you let me start up, if you uh, start up that investigation group. Now, for those of you who obvi you obviously don't know what Emily was talking about, she was she and I had a conversation at at uh, the Michigan Paracon about how some about how she could go into an investigation, but she is hard of hearing, and in that case she would actually, her heightened senses might be able to pick up something that a normal investigator who doesn't have any disabilities might completely miss. And I, I had never really thought of that. I mean, I'm not an investigator, so I, I guess it really wouldn't occur to me anyway. But it's interesting that it, could you take somebody on an investigation, a paranormal investigation, if you're on a ghost hunt somewhere, and bring somebody who has a disability, somebody who is deaf, or who is blind, or is perhaps autistic, and what are they going to sense that maybe you, as a as just a completely normal human being without disabilities, are they going to pick up something that you don't? Emily said that she was she's already a, uh, um, a sensitive person to that. She's sensitive to the paranormal, so it'd be interesting to see what would happen if she got onto an investigation team and uh, went out. I would love to hear what happens in a situation like that. 
And one more email. This one comes from Julie. She says, Hi, Darren. Hope you're having a great day. I started listening to your podcast this past January, and I'm hooked. I've tried other horror and uh, paranormal content. Or, bleh, let me try contests. <laughs> let me try that again. I've tried other horror and paranormal podcasts, but they do not come close to your great narration and production. I have a few stories that I would love to share with you sometime, and hopefully I can make it out to one of your scheduled events this fall. Is there any place that I can listen to older episodes of the podcast? I'm caught up with all the episodes that are currently uploaded to Spotify. I think I heard you mention that your podcast goes back to 2017 or 2018, and I'd love to hear the older shows. Keep up the great work. Kind regards. Signed, Julie. Well, Julie, I'm really glad that you like the show, uh, that you, as you said, are hooked on it. And yes, I would love to see you sometime at one of the events on the road trip. You can keep up with the road trip. Just go to WeirdDarkness.com, click on Road Trip, and I'm trying to keep that list as updated as possible. And I'm adding a, an event almost every week now. It's, uh, it's getting crazy. So be sure to check up on that on a regular basis. Uh, in answer to your question about uh, hearing old episodes, I actually began the podcast just before Halloween of 2015. We're coming up on our year number seven uh, this year. Uh, but what I do is I take old episodes and repost them as dark archive episodes or, as, uh, was, uh, as was suggested earlier, darkive episodes, as Andy recommended. Um, but I'll post those uh, again, uh, especially if I'm not feeling well or if it's a, if it's a weekend. Um, I, I post older episodes. So you've probably heard some of those older episodes already. You just didn't know it. So if you just keep listening to the new episodes as they come out, you will eventually hear all the old episodes, too. And I do that, again, because sometimes I'm sick. I also do that on the weekends. But also because I know 90% of the people listening have not heard those older episodes because they go back so far. So that's why I do it. And so far, people don't complain too much about it. I think I've maybe had two complaints out of the 30,000-some people who are listening right now. So I think that's a pretty good ratio. So thank you very much for the email, Julie. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you'd like to email me and be in the Chamber of Comments in the future, all you have to do is send me an email to Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at WeirdDarkness.com. That's Darren at WeirdDarkness.com. And if you have a story that you want to tell me, something that's actually true that's happened to you or somebody you know, we do have our Fireside Frights episode that we do every month. And you can send those stories in by going to the website and clicking on Tell Your Story. And I try to use all of them that come in unless I just can't make uh, you know, heads or tails out of them because the spelling is atrocious or because there's no capitalization or if it's one long run-on sentence. But if you, can, you know, if you can clean it up at least a little bit, I'd appreciate it. But if you do have a story to tell, again, true stories is, is what I'm looking for for Fireside Frights. You can just click on Tell Your Story at WeirdDarkness.com.